And the court says no way they belong to Twitter and can be used against you. That's the case for Occupy protesters arrested during a march on the Brooklyn Bridge last fall. The judge ruling, quote, if you post a tweet, just like if you scream out a window, there's no reasonable exception of privacy. There is no proprietary, I'm sorry, expectation of privacy. There is no prop uh, proprietary interest in your tweets, which you have now gifted to the world. Fox News senior judicial analyst and laugher extraordinaire, <laughs> Judge Andrew Napolitano, is here now. I'm laughing because I spent four years in a windowless room with Kelman. Oh, I always yeah. had to keep moving, right? I, just, I like to keep hold, going. Hold How many ad bills did you take? Oh. No, just kidding. We love Brian. Of um, okay, so is this. Right, legally. Well, it's groundbreaking, I can tell you that. It's the first case in the United States of America in which a judge has said, because I tweet to the three of you, as opposed to email just to Eric, that there's no expectation of privacy in the, in the tweet. I think that this will be appealed to a higher court. This is an entry-level court. This is a New York City criminal court that has a limited amount of jurisdiction. I think when it's appealed to a higher court, perhaps even to the Supreme Court of the United States, uh -oh. they'll be forced to apply, God knows what they'll do, <laughs> but they'll be forced to apply standard privacy jurisprudence to this. The standard rule before this case was if you communicate with three people, that's private between you and those three. Just because the three becomes 30 or 300, you don't necessarily lose the privacy. This is an Occupy Wall Street protester, and the government wanted all of his tweets, no matter the subject matter and no matter to whom he tweeted. And the court said, once you hit that send button, it's not yours They're 100% anymore. right. They're 100% right. Think about it. The way Twitter is right now, you want to build as many followers as possible and get your thoughts out there, no matter how inane they are. So these people put their thoughts out there. Now, all of a sudden, they're concerned about sharing it? Are you kidding? Well, there's a little thing called the Fourth Amendment which until yesterday, and I shouldn't say until yesterday, because this, this case only applies, this ruling only applies in this case. It has no effect anywhere else because of the level of the court. If this were the uh, Federal Court of Appeals in New York, it would apply in a couple of states. It just applies to this judge in this courtroom. But before that, the rule would have been, the government has to show a reason for the tweets. It can't just ask for them. And the reason has to be some evidence of crime mm -hmm. involved in, really? the, in the language of the tweets. But Judge, it does, does it only apply to the tweets that are sent out to the public domain? Or it, you can direct message Brian directly. Yeah. That's a tweet, technically. That's different. Can right. they go after those? Right. I will say this to the Jeff, for the judge, as critical as I have been of him, he did sit down and read all the tweets himself and decide that some right. of them were hilarious. Uh, some of them were utterly not worthy of going to the but, but, Remind but, me to buy shoes. But isn't, wasn't it in this case that they are trying to prove criminality? So it's like subpoenaing any other document that, that might help them in the case. Except that that puts the court, uh, the, the court, the cart before the horse. Because the Fourth Amendment requires that before the government can get the documents or the tweets or the emails or the text messages, right. it has to have some evidence of, of crime. Well, it can't get them and hope that there's evidence in there. I blame Jefferson. Why didn't he anticipate the rise of Twitter, and therefore we were, we're stuck with this problem on our hands? Well, last time I spoke to Jefferson, he didn't want to talk about that. Right, I know. He's always has to talk about his his farm. I know. Heard he might rather talk about being governor of Virginia than with Does Eric Holder tweet? <laughs> That'd be a very good question. My guess is he probably does. Most of the uh, people in the Obama administration do. I'd like to see some don't, of those tweets. Don't suggest it to Congressman Issa, because it'll be the basis of another subpoena. 